Alrighty, here we are, back at the layout, doing a little bit of work here on the uh, Eugene Yard area. One thing I wanted to do was kind of get this back area by this retaining wall scenic, I'll call it. I mean, they had some stuff there, but it wasn't really finished. And in the interim, I had this yard light tower from Alcom Scale Models. Okay, that's not... <laughs> I got it built. It's not my finest work. I, had, I struggled with it. It's a uh, brass kit. I decided to solder it because super glue was not holding it. So I said, okay, I'll solder it. You know, I've soldered enough fast tracks turnouts. Well, I can do that just fine. Eh, not so much with this. Anyway, it's <laughs> that's why it's way back at the farthest point in the back of the yard that I could put it. I was going to put it up by the engine terminal, but I didn't want it anywhere near the front because it is pretty tall. And I did not want... I mean, it would have been an elbow magnet, so I said, no, okay, I'll put it there in the back. So, it's together. Um, I did light it. I'll show you that in a minute. It's, uh, it's hard to wire five spotlights on top of that thing. All the wires are kind of sticking up. Again, it's not the greatest thing. It's not going to win any contests, but who cares. But I did, like I guess I did come along in here, and where that... Uh, oil tank was. I added a pad for it. And you can see I added some weedage along the top and bottom of the retaining wall and added some additional ballast in there to kind of smooth things out. I added a little building there. I figured that's that. Some type of yard control building there for the lights. You see I added one of the New York Central cabinets there on the end as a little control area. Some signs here and there. Just enough to give the impression that yeah, you know, there's something going on back there. Not worried about going crazy because it's far, far back and no one's really going to pay attention to it. I did throw some barrels in there and some leftover lumber here and there. Just enough. So you look at it and your eyes will see some stuff, register it, and then you'll move on. So that whole area now is pretty, pretty much completed all the way across from the door there at UG Manufacturing. Good, good enough. Good enough. Track's been cleaned, so hopefully I won't have to reach back there anymore except to uncouple cars. Now, just a touch on the light. I might have to take the camera out of the tripod here to show what a mess this is. It, it really, really is a challenge to try to light this yard tower. Um, I don't know how well it's going to show up. If you can see the wire, oh yeah, you probably can see the wires up there because I had to do something. I mean, first of all, the wires are super small. I don't know, 30 gauge or something, whatever they are. They're little. And then you got to cut them because you don't want six inch leads. I couldn't stick it into the, um, what I decided to do to bring the leads down. Inside, I added a 16th inch brass tube, which you can probably see in the back there. Painted black, it looks okay, kind of blends in. But that's where the wires run down. And what I decided to do was run, the, there's three lights in the front, they're on one current limiter. The two lights to the sides, they're on another current limiter. So I, I brought all the cathodes together, brought them down with one 30 gauge wire. And then two 30 gauge wires I brought up from the current limiters, which are down below the layout, so there's like two independent circuits. There's a, you know, one circuit with three in the front, and then there's one with a two on the side, and then the wiring's a mess. But it is what it is, and it's kind of you can kind of see that brass tube there in the back because I wanted again I wanted to solder it, and then I did go ahead and let it extend into the uh, past the base a little bit to give me something to plant it into the layout. That worked pretty good. Drilled the 16th inch holes nice and snug. It sat there nice and flat. And then when I put a little bit of the ballast around it, it's not going to go anywhere. And it's not glued in, so to speak, so it would come out. I ever want to save it. So, all right. So let's go ahead and zoom back. And again, that's why it's way in the back because, <laughs> because of those wires. But you know what? I don't know what else to do. I guess if I was doing it, from scratch or if they included the lights you could put this little tiny brass lead you can solder them together and not make them so long but I don't know how else to do it but anyway they are hooked up so it should yay 
Now, I don't know actually how bright it is. I mean, it looks okay here with the lights on, but let me pause it, turn the lights off, and see if it does anything at all in terms of actually lighting up the yard. <laughs> okay, I got the ISO cranked up to 2,000 f-stop all the way open. Anyway, um, it does. I mean, you can kind of see where it's shining down here on the tracks. So, okay, so it does something. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's perfect. It does like the backup back drop up too, which really wasn't my intention. But all right, good enough. You know, what I mean, it's like I got it lit. Check that one off my to-do list. Um, I do think it looks okay. The lights might be annoying. They are kind of bright. That's why they're on a switch because I'm, I'm finding that most of the time having the lights come on automatically. You know, with, with the layout is eh, don't do that. Just let let's I'm going to switch them so I can turn them off because most of the time we're running during the day with lights on and this is just kind of one of those ooh-ah type things that you show someone, they go, hmm, yeah, that's nice, and they move on and want to run their train, so. Okay, let's go back to uh, normal daylight and see how it looks. All right, there we go. So, like I said, it's now on a switch, as is the building to the left of it and the building to the right of it. So now I can just turn them off and uh, wow people when they come in, so. <laughs> Hey, another reason I wasn't too terribly worried about the back there, because most of the time it's going to be more like this. And you're going to have, you know, it's a working yard, so you're going to have cars here and there. And on the tracks. Yeah. So, you know, again, so most of what people are going to look at. It's probably going to be the, you know, what's going on in the yard itself. So, the back there, it's just, just good enough. I did add switch stands. There's a switch stand. Can I zoom in on it? That's a Central Valley switch stand. Just something. Again, it's just to show that, yep, they're there. And I put one there. And I had five of them, so I put five of them. One's at the far end, just because I wasn't sure where else to put it. One at the, the far back there, and then one here at this end. And then two more, again, it's up kind of on, a, on the far, far back. Try to get the back side done there and up there. Just so I don't have to mess with it anymore. So I probably could have left it alone and no one really ever would have noticed. But that little bit does kind of bring it up, kind of, kind of dress up the edge. I like it. It looks good. Okay. So that's that. That's the uh, light stand installation on the layout and a little bit of scenery there in the back. The back edge of Eugene Yard. Telltale. It's a telltale indication that you're nuts when you worry about this stuff on the layout. Anyway. <sighs> okay, so I've had these telltales. That's a detail I wanted to include for a while now, and I'm just kind of futzing around here, just doing different things, and I said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these in. These are from Model Memories. They're nice. Uh, I have a couple single-track ones, which are easy, and then there's this double, double track up to four tracks, which is not so easy. <laughs> it's really, it's a, this is a pain in the, you know what. But anyway, I got, I got it in. So I just figured I'd show real quick. This is the double track approaching the bridge in Wallace Junction. And I pretty much made it per the instructions, sort of. I didn't follow it exactly. What I decided to do, and I'll show you some other locations where I have them in progress. I added the, it comes with a base, which is way down there. I actually installed it, super glued it on at the, at the correct height based on, you know, drilling the hole, bringing it over to the layout, and kind of looking at it. They give you the dimensions, and they're pretty accurate. So I did that. They, they don't recommend doing it that. They have a different direction for it, but that's what I did. Then I actually glued, secured in the two posts, cleared out the ballast, since I'm already doing it, you know, this has already been scenic and ballasted. I had to clean it out a little bit, get a nice flat surface. Then I put them in. Uh, you drill a one-eighth hole which is usually pretty snug. If not, add a little bit of masking tape to the bottom of the um, 
post. They give you plenty of room to stick into the layout, so it's pretty secure. I did uh, add some of the Beacons 3-in-1 glue. Came back with the ballast, let it dry up, you know, put it back in, and then use the ballast and the, you know, diluted Mod Podge to, uh, to it for additional securement. Then, uh, so then it's in place, and the bottom wire, I'll call it, they give you some wire in the kit. I don't like it. It's all bent, and I was like, they tell you how to put it in a vise and pull it, and stuff. I'm like, no, oh, good Lord. I use some 020, um, what is it, the phosphor bronze stuff from Titchy, which is nice and straight. I took it out. I spray painted it with uh, Panzer Gray, and then what you do is you make a hook, and you put one hook end in right there. And that's not bad. Then you run it across. You have to kind of cut it in place, drop the other end in, and then I put a dab of super glue on each. Okay, cool. Then that top piece, they call it stretchy material. What it really is, to me, it looks like Berkshire Lines Easy Line. So, okay, they, they provide gray in with the kit. I don't, that looks silly. They say, don't paint it, use a felt marker. I'm like, how oh, the heck with that? I'm going to use, I have some black of the Berkshire uh, easy line. So I use that instead. It, it looks like the exact same stuff, and I don't have to worry about messing with it. Now that's a lot more fun because you have to get it in the little loop on this side, tie a knot, and I added a dab of super glue. All right, let that set up. And then you, you got then you got to pull it across, pull it tight. You know, take the slack out, but not so that you're bending the poles, and then get that side in. <laughs> tie a knot and dab a super glue. Now what I did was I actually I filled around and luckily it's close enough to the layout so I have to come in with my freaking glasses and the damn these damn goggle thing because I can't see crap. I, I, I fed the line in, pulled it how I wanted it, put a dab of super glue. Once that's set up I went back and tied the knot and then put another small dab of super glue. Okay that seemed to work okay. Then you got to come back in and add these four clips, they call them. Now they just kind of clip from the top to the bottom, and they were fine. That was okay. With the tweezers, I was able to get those in, set them up. Although I did put, I'm sorry, I did put the combs or the telltales there in place first to align the clips. They're kind of right outside where they, where they hang. So, okay, so I, and the combs are just hanging there, they'll, they'll swing, they're just kind of loose. So then I came back in, as I put the clips in, the four clips, and then dab a super glue, top and bottom. Came back in, touch up the paint, and there you go. So not too terrible, but a, a little bit nitinoid. And I had to put a piece of white paper behind it, because you cannot really see this on the camera. I tried to take, you know, pictures of it, and it's, it's, it just kind of blends. You can see it in person, but trying to video it or, or photograph it is, is a bit of a challenge. And I did, you can see I kind of cut some of the combs, the, the, you know, the strings, I guess, the ropes that hang down. They are rusted. Everything's rusted up with a little bit of a wash of uh, Vallejo. Uh, what did I use? Oh, the uh, dark rust. Just to kind of tone it down. They are painted black. You could just put them in like that, but I just kind of rusted them up a little bit. Because every, every photograph I've seen of Telltales, they are not in really good shape. They're beat up. They're missing. Some look like, you know, why is it even there? There's like one string hanging down. But I, I didn't go quite to that extreme. But All right, so that's how it looks. And again, it's protecting that bridge there in the back. Now, if I pull this paper out of here, I bet it's going to disappear into the netherland. So, <laughs> there you go. You can hardly even see it. Again, you can see it when you're looking at it, but trying to get it here is, is a challenge. Like I said, it's to protect that bridge back there and I'm not really sure I need it but I did, I did it for fun because in all honesty that bridge will clear double stacks and remember this layout used to be modern era and we were running auto racks and double stacks so I'm not sure the height is low enough to warrant actually needing them and I'm not an expert on the telltale civil engineering installation guidelines I said you know what I have these darn things I bought them I'm going to use them so all right, so that's the one on this side. Let me show you the other side, the single track ones, which are a lot easier. I'll show you where I put them over in Wallace. All right, again, these are 
hard to see, but there's two there. <clears throat> and I went with the single track ones here because I tried to string a double track one across with the sidings and the oleum branch. It just didn't work. So I figured, all right, I'll just slap in two of the single track ones, which are much, much easier. They're all solid. They There's no stringing of, of stringy stuff or running wire. You just kind of cut it, hang it, and you're, and you're done. Now, again, I don't know if this will help at all. If I lay that in there, you can kind of see. And whoa! <laughs> All right, so that's where those two are. Again, to protect the bridge. And then I put one coming off the branch, which is where I'm not going to be able to see it. It's going to be hidden back here in the freaking trees. <laughs> All right, it's in front of that telephone pole. You can't even see it. Can you see it? Barely, like right there. <laughs> I don't know if this will even work, but I don't want to damage the scenery. Ah, too late. All right, anyway, it's it's there, coming off the branch. Okay, so that's that. So that's this side of Wallace, and then the other ones I'm going to do, since I'm a nutcase and I might as well get this done, are on both sides of the tunnel. So there's going to be one over here. And one over here. Now, these will be the double track ones. Let me see if I, I have the. Let me, let me move this forward a little bit and see if I can show you how, how they're going to be installed. Okay, again, this is really hard to show. Let's see if that helps make a little bit. Let me go in this way. Anyway, all right, so those two pull, like I said, I drill the holes. They're installed. I redid the ballast at the base. Let it sit overnight so they're nice and secured. So now the next thing I'm going to do here on, on this set, and it shouldn't be that bad. It's real close to the aisle. I'll come in and on the bottom, you know, I'll run that 020 wire across, dab a super glue on each side, then come up top and run the stringy stuff. <laughs> which is what they call it, the easy line. <clears throat> Run that across. Yell and swear and get frustrated with the knots, but get that, get that done. Lay the combs in across the tracks, and then put the clips in and secure it. So and that sounds a lot easier to say than it is to actually do, but it is doable. You just got to take your time. All right, so that'll be, the, that'll be this one. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go off tripod here to show you the other location, and I'm not sure it's going to work. But hey, I'll give it a whirl. So let me show you where the other one's going to be. Okay, this one's going to be a real, a real true pain in the rear. They're just sitting here right now because I was thinking of trying to build it at the bench, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So again, I cleared out the, the base. This one's a little bit. I might put a little bit of tape on this one, and then I'm going to go ahead and get that glued, get the ballast in. This one again, same thing. I had to clear out the base a little bit, and you can see I put a wrap of blue tape to snug it up. Then I'll put a little bit of the beacon glue, three in one glue around the base of both of these. Get them in, put the ballast back in, hit it with the you know the Mod Podge and everything to secure it up, and then do this one tomorrow. <laughs> and the problem with this one is because how I'm holding the camera is like I have to step, step on a step stool, and then I got to come in, I got to reach in where the damn visors. Try to get uh, the bottom one should be okay. That's a solid piece. Trying to do this one with that easy line and string it and tie knots, leaning over to this. It, this is yeah. This is definitely going to be some uh, harsh language on this one, but I think I can do it. If not, I'll just maybe put a wire across the top, like an O10, and see if the clips will just bend it a little bit. Just to, cause I, I'm not going to go nuts on this, but. Because that is to protect this tunnel portal over there. All right, so yeah, so this one's gonna be fun. We'll give it a whirl. Let's see how it goes, and then uh, then that's done. So that's just one little detail I wanted to show. Again, these are by Model Memories. They sell single tracks, single track ones. I think in black or silver, and then double double or up to four track in black or silver. They're nice. 
They're a little bit more detailed, a little more accurate, I think, like the, the tissue ones. Now, the tissue ones are okay. I, I, I'm be drawing over this way. I put a tissue one. Oh, shoot, it might even not even show up way back there somewhere. Just because, like, you know, that's so far back that you're not really going to see it. So, because I do have some of the titchy ones. I thought, eh, for the front, you know, close to the aisle, where people are going to see it, I'll try this. Because I'm just a glutton for punishment. All right. More to come if I survive this, uh, <laughs> this endeavor. All right, just so you all can share in the agony. All right, so I got the O20 wire across. Not too bad. I know it's probably really hard to see. I uh, made a little hook on that far side, hooked it in, brought it across to the other pole. Kind of eh, Kentucky vintage it by, by eye. <laughs> Cut it with some cutters, made a bend, and it fit in pretty nice. And now it's got some super glue on it, so it's just sitting there. All right, so that's, that's the first step. Now the next step, where's the damn stuff? Yeah, right down there. That crazy easy line that's next uh, so what I'll do is I'll try to put it in the back one tie a knot dab a super glue bring it across get it through the little tiny loop at this end not throw my pliers or the super glue or the knives or anything around the layout dab it on there with super glue let it set tie a knot and then hope for the best so all right you may or may not ever hear from me again Oh, I actually survived another one. All right, so with the white backing piece, just to prove it's there. It's there. It's uh, <laughs> it's in. It's been touched up. A little bit of pain. It got the clips in okay. So, it, you know, it worked out all right. You know, I'm not saying it's the funnest thing to do. <sighs> but, you know, how well it's a focus. And it is in there. Clips are in. Combs are cut up a little bit to show some use over the years or abuse or whatever. All right, this, I imagine this is one of those things that you, you put them up, they hang there, and kind of whatever happens to them happens to them. I'm guessing. I don't know. All right, so that's the uh, number two of the double tracks done. And I watch how it disappears if I pull this white paper out of there. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Oops, a little dark. Okay, well, that is that. So, again, they are do it is doable. It's got to take your time. So I got one more to do, which won't be nearly as much fun because I do have to climb over and reach where this one being right here off of the aisle was not that bad at all. I did need a flashlight to bring in there because it is a little bit dark over here, at least in terms of installing telltales. <laughs> All right. That's that. Maybe I'll show the other one. Maybe I won't. Who knows? That's if I, assuming I ever <laughs> actually get the darn thing installed. That'll be tomorrow. The uh, poles are in now. The ballast is in, drying up. So that'll be tomorrow's little treat. But All right. That's it. Telltales from uh, Model Memories. Woohoo! All right, you see the telltale? Can you see it? Can you see it? Where is it? Huh? Huh? <laughs> okay. So this one I got done. Again, I had to climb on a step stool, but it uh, wasn't too bad. I got a little nervous hanging in there with again with the my glasses and the magnifier goggles and looking like a dork, but got it done. So I think it went easier because. I just finished the other two, so I kind of had... That's why I like to do this kind of stuff in batches. We don't need no stinking batches, but I like to do it that way because you get in a groove, you kind of know what you're doing. And if I had walked away and come back a week later, I would have looked, how did I do this now? So, all right. So that I know it's hard to see, but... Whew! Okay, three double-track telltales and all the other telltales. It's a telltale story. I'm zooming too fast. Again, the the ones here in Farish Junction. I don't know. Do you think would they have one here? Because 
All right, I got the main they got coming off the branch. But most likely, and I'm no expert, if you're a dude, a brakeman, so to speak, hanging out on top of a box car, you might, is it possible you'd be hanging out at coming out here? So should I put a single track one here? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Smash that like button. Blah, blah, blah. Because I do have another single track one, so I could. Anyway, I don't know. Not sure what should be there or not, but okay. Enough of that. What else is going on down here in this mess? Ooh, very dangerous. Where'd the plexiglass go? Alright, so what I'm finally doing, as you'll notice, I painted the fascia here, because what I want to do is put the actual, for real, turnout controls for the crossover, for the industrial spur in the spur and then this is going to be the remote lock hand turnout that's going to be on the main line so i have those plates being made up we'll see, uh, see how they look and as you can see i have the holes in the fascia cut out appropriately for those so when i get those in i did the wiring underneath for the most part and then it's just a matter of popping all the switches back in. And my check sheet down here for how to wire stuff. I have the crossover turn, the crossover double pull, double throw, reverse wired. <laughs> Ready to go. All right, so this will be done shortly. And like I said, I, did, I painted from a little nook there all the way down to Thar, and I redid that just to refresh it since I had the paint out. I also painted more fascia. And I had to paint out. I said, oh, what the heck. I wasn't really in the mood, but I did it. All right, enough babbling. Let's show this one. This is all done and ready to be fired up. All right, we're back in business here. Got everything reinstalled and more, a little more permanent signs or placards, I guess, for the turnouts. I like the way the yellow stands out against the blue. Eh, I like it. Did make one mistake, <laughs> of course. When I went to put these two in, I had them up too high. So the first hole I drilled for the hardware, which is there, is too high because then I can't get a nut on the back of that. So, yeah. Oh well. All right, so those just control the turnouts. And then this is typical. I've showed this before, and nothing new here. It's just the electric locked hand operated switch this is for the spur so again the crew normally would have a would have a key with them they would come in they basically remove the padlock which unlocks it so that that does feed back to the CMRI that a it's unlocked and it also th feeds back the turnout position and then they can go ahead and do their duty lock it and away they go so all right so that's done and like i said that that run of fascia there from the corner up to where we started with the building that's all done so all right there we go what else can i fiddle around with here
All right, so our manifest has made it, pulled onto the New Earth Yard runner. What you probably wouldn't do, I'm just doing this to kill some time and pad the run length of this video. You probably would have stayed on the main and had a pickup off the North Yard runner at the west end. Come in, dropped and picked, and then gone on his merry way, because he doesn't terminate here. But, eh, you know, for the video, I, just, I brought him in just for the just for fun. That, that's a Broadway Limited. Um, I think it's a Paragon 2. Uh, Pen C L1, and you know, he runs okay. I've heard people complain about him. It was a little uh, twitchy. I had to clean the track where that Atlas uh, F F or, uh, FM, the Fairbank Fairbanks Morse 816, it ran fine. And that's a really nice running locomotive. That was an eBay find I got for a good price, so I'm glad I picked it up. But this Broadway Limited, it ran fine in the main line. It had some issues in the yard, but I cleaned the track and then it ran fine. So you know, steam engines tend to be that way sometimes, depends on the pickup. But anyway, what I decided to show now, just for you know what and giggles, um, I have a repositioning cruise set up. <laughs> um, I have some loaded coal cars. I was going to run them back over into staging, get them set for a loaded coal train, because usually the loaded Pensy coal trains come out of Williamsport run eastbound over the layout uh, into the yard here and then get taken to the dock and someone asked me in a recent video if I have a big boy for the layout no I do not but I have this monster which is I think maybe even more of a challenge to run it's a Pensy J1 2104 and given the five axles there the rigid wheelbase this thing is really finicky on this layout it tends to run okay through the number eight turnouts around the main, the curves it seems to do okay, even on, on a 30 inch, 30 inch radius. Although I think 36 would be better, but you have what you have. Where it really does not like things are number six turnouts, and especially some of the curved turnouts over in staging. And maybe I'll even show you that because it actually will derail. So I may make some changes in staging. I'm not sure. It annoys me and bothers me. I'm not sure it bothers me enough to make changes, but I might. So what I figured I'd do, just for fun, like I said, to run the, <laughs> to pad the run length of this video, to get us to the 45-minute minimum uh, runtime requirement for Bennett Railroad videos, I'm going to run him back into staging. So I figured, eh, what the heck, I'll video it. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to, let's see, what's his number here? We're going to get our ops throttle, 6498. Six, four, nine, eight, boom. All right. So now this one does seem to run okay. I need to crack the throttle to get the sound and get him to wake up. Oh, see, even he's gonna be a little bit finicky. Come on, boy. I hate doing that, but there right, we go. Okay. All right. Headlight. Hopefully. Oh, I think I just turned that little. So I do let oh, I did it turn. I turned the damn headlight off. Hit F zero. The wrong time. Too much. Right. His bell's too loud. I probably gotta again get him on the uh, programming track and turn that down. Yeah, I like that. I'm not sure all the other functions do, but anyway. Alright, so what we're going to do, I'm just going to run him out of the yard. Let me throw the crossover to get him onto the main. And I think I have an issue over in Sharon that I'll actually show you. But like I said, we show the good, the bad, and the ugly here. And mostly the ugly. There seems to be a delay on the Broadway engines for the... I don't know if that's normal or not. Alright. Well, he should run okay. We'll find out. So these, so these are all number eights through here. Going out onto the main. Oops. 
saying hello to the sharks. The unit's taking his job away. As he's ready to head to the scrap pile. I just like the it's a really cool locomotive, but like I said it's really at the max for what I can run on this layout. I'm just gonna pause, move over to Sharon and show you the issue I have over there. At least I think I will. We'll find out in a moment. Chugging over nice and slow, and well, as I mentioned, this this is the other back in the back there. That's the face I painted just for the fun of it. All right, he's getting his way through the tunnel here. So let me. Oh, I gotta throw the cross of his. Hold on. Across and into the staging. I said he should be okay here. I actually never tried it this direction. These are all number eights. Crank that bell. Man, that's loud. <laughs> that's enough of that. Now the issue is going to be, let me just slow him down a little bit here. Right here, at the edge of this platform, that railing, this isn't the best angle to see it, but that it's really close and he might, whoa, 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 hold on buddy. These cylinders might actually hit that. So I ran a Hippo, a Pensy 210, and it hit that. Ooh, it just. Oh, no, see, it's dragging it. It's right. It's the end of that railing. I'm probably going to have to cut it back a little bit. Because certain Lokis are going to want to hit that. Obviously, I didn't. Oh, see, it's dragging across the bottom of the firebox. <laughs> okay, note to self. Fix the railing on the Sharon platform. All right, now he's going to go into staging. I'm going to bring him in a little bit and stop him. And then walk over there and... And normally he doesn't run this way. He'll normally let me stop him there. He would come out of Williamsport heading the other way, into Eugene, into the dock, drop his train, go to the turntable, spin, and he barely, I mean barely fits the turntable, but he does. And then go back the other way with an empty. But I'll just go ahead and staging again just to pad the run length of this and show you where the issue is with this monster. I'm going to ask you to bear with me. I went tripod free here. So I'm going to go ahead and get him lined up. Bring him up the main. I normally would have him, because he's the coal train, the loaded coal train is really the first train out on an op session. So I'll usually have him on the main all the way back in the pocket so I can run a nice long train out of there. Now let's see here. Now these are Pico number sixes, which he should be okay with, but I hope. <laughs> so, oh. oh, 
Sorry about that. I'm going to try to hold it steady, but no promises. Cool card around now. Looks like. Ah, oh, here we go. Now the main lines always power it, so I don't have to play with the toggles or anything. All right, you did okay there. Uh, this car is. Is he derailed? I think he is off the track. Hold on a second. Here. Snickany. Alright, so his real issue is a drone over this way. These two turnouts here. Now he's on the main going straight out. Usually not an issue, but I tried to bring him in one time through one of these turnouts and he just derailed. Just could not take it. So I don't know if I want to worry about changing that or not. I got some ideas what to do. Because it kind of annoys me. But where do you go? Oh, there he is. So I guess I'm gonna, I'll run him out the main and see if he does it or if he's going to derail. They also may have an issue with the throw, the, uh, throw bars coming in on the tortoises might be a problem too. But Yeah, let's see what happens. Like I said, good, bad, and ugly, right? Let's see. So the outer leg of those turnouts is a 36 inch radius, so there, that's probably fine. The inner is the 24 inch radius, which it no like. <laughs> Did not like it at all. So what I'll do is I'll stop them here. All right, now I'm gonna do again yeah, part. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast. Try not to be seasickness inducing. So I'm going to back him up on the main stage him here. So I'm going to throw that going back into the pocket. So basically I'm going to sit him here. Like I said, he would be normally be the, the very first train to head out during an op session. Not that I'm planning to have an op session with the and a rear virus going on, but let's see if he uh, behaves himself going in reverse. Oh, well, look at this. Oh, freaking Pensy Hopper, it's just got to be that way. Got to be that way, derailing on me. Make sure I don't uh, run off the back of the world there. Here he comes, trying to do eight things at once here, hold a throttle, watch the back, watch the front, and he just shorted out, see? So. There's something going on with those fast tracks turnouts. And there it goes again. Here I'm shorting. Hey, caramba. Well, this is embarrassing. Okay. I don't think the tender's derailed. 
Again, there's something with those two turnouts. Either I didn't make them quite right. We have the frog. I can check the gauge of the frogs and everything like that and make sure it's uh, not an issue there. But like I said, now the diesels and smaller steam don't seem to have an issue. But you get this and the, the, the hippo, which is the two. It's a, here's a. That's another version of it. Uh, Pensy I1. SA 210 nicknamed the hippo. Don't ask me why. I mean, that's, that's cool. That's also, you know, since it's also a five, you know, five axle rigid, it also has some issues here and there. Not quite as much as the J because this is a it's a big locomotive. Okay. So that's that. That's enough for padding the run length. In fact, this might even be sneaking up on an hour now. Like I said, he would be sitting here normally, ready to go, the first one out. Not an issue, but trying to bring him back. If I try to bring him in off another track, if I want to keep him off the main, it's going to derail coming through those curved turnouts. So, Alright, so that's it for now for the first video of the year. Got a little bit of train run in action. Got some uh, exciting telltale and turnout switch installations. <laughs> Woohoo! Alright, more to come. I guess I'm going to think about doing something here. I don't know if I want to muck with it right away. Because we're not going to be operating. Hopefully not. Well, hopefully soon, but I don't know. Anyway. Alright. Enough of this. Let's get this bad boy uh, into editing. Spank it on the rear and get it posted. Thanks for watching, folks. More to come as we uh, forge ahead into 2021. Okay, okay, this is a post-credit scene. Are you, aren't you glad you stayed to the very end? All right, just FYI. Just to, just to say, <laughs> I tried as, all right, off camera, I tried bringing them back through the, no way. It's, it, it's just not going to, it's not going to make it. It derails as soon as he gets into the curve part of the turnout. So, if I'm going to run him off anything but the main here, I'm going to have to do something back here. Not that I want to set the layout out for one locomotive, but it's interesting. It's just, I guess with that rigid wheelbase, it is not going to go through a 24-inch radius. So, now interestingly, he came back through this Pico number 6 okay, but I was just a straight move back. So, all right, FYI, that's just, just for fun. If you're ever going to buy a BLI J1, be careful what size turnouts you use. Maybe if I had just straight number sixes and went nice and slow, it'd be okay. But a curved turnout, unless you're doing a nice, real big... I mean, you almost would need to do something like a 42 and a 36-inch radius, I think. Otherwise, it's just going to give you all kinds of headaches. So, anywho, all right, that ends the post credit scene. Now, I really will get this video done and through editing and posted. And again, uh, Happy New Year, everyone, and... Uh, Let's all have a good 2021.